Hey, my name is John Harkness, and I'm the developer of Pipsqueak. In this video, we're going to talk a little bit about some of the features of Pipsqueak and how to get it set up on your computer. So at this point, you should have ImageJ or Fiji installed. And in the previous video, we've talked about how to install Pipsqueak onto your version of ImageJ. So let's go ahead and open Pipsqueak, and we can start to take a look at some of the features and settings of the program. If we go into our plugins, macros, and then click on this very first pipsqueak heading, we can open the program. So the first thing we can see here is a change log of things that have been updated in the previous versions of pipsqueak. Uh, and one thing to keep note of, in addition to some of the new features, is what's going on with the version number. When we implement a version of pipsqueak that is no longer compatible with data collected in previous versions, we change the tenths division here, and we'll also note it in the change log. But this is a good thing to keep track of to make sure that if you're uh, spreading analysis across multiple sessions, you're using the same uh, analysis parameters. So now that we've closed that, we can see our uh, main menu of Pipsqueak. We've designed Pipsqueak to be very good at picking up stains that are associated with perineuronal nets. Uh, a lot of our staining is done with WFA and PARP albumin, and so for this reason, all of our parameters have really been tailored to those two stains. That's not to say that the program won't pick up others, but you're going to need to do a little to tailor the parameters for your stain. For example, we have used our count cells function to look at CFOS images, uh, but this requires us to tailor uh, our settings just a little bit. So let's look at what those settings might be. Okay, so this is the first of four screens in our settings, and we can see two things right off the bat. First, we have dimensions of the images that we are opening in Pipsqueak. Uh, this first number here is something that you're gonna have to determine from your microscope camera. Uh, it is the physical distance in microns per pixel that your uh, microscope camera is capturing. And so this is really important because it tells Pipsqueak uh, the area of an ROI that's being collected and also is incorporated into some of the intensity calculations. So you're going to want to make sure that you get the correct number for your images uh, in order to determine these things correctly. And so next we're going to go on and actually take a look at how to collect that information from your microscope camera. And the first way that we can look at doing that is the most common way out there and that's by actually placing a scale bar onto one of the images that you collect. So here we're looking at the LAS software package that we use with our Leica confocal microscope. And so what we can do is uh, use the scale bar tool to place a scale bar directly onto the image. Uh, this is an image that's only gonna be used for the scale calculation. And so what you want to do is just make a fairly straight line here. And I'm going to make this one about 100 microns long. And then we're going to go and we're just going to uh, export this image as a TIFF file. Uh, making sure to incorporate uh, the overlays and the ROIs, uh, the ROI here being the scale bar. And so we can save it. and then open it in image j what we're going to do is uh, determine the length of that scale bar that we put onto our image in pixels so i can take the image that i collected and i'm going to open it in fiji and i can see the scale bar there next i want to go over to the straight line tool select that and go back to my image and i'm going to draw a line i'm going to draw align uh, just the length of that scale bar. I want to get about as close as I can and when I do that I'm now going to go up to analyze set scale and here I'm going to enter the uh, distance of that scale bar so it's about uh, 100 microns long and we're going to change that unit length to microns. And so when we do that, uh, this is going to set the scale of the image, but it's also telling us a little bit about the ratio here. So we're seeing that for every uh, 100 microns uh, across an image, we are moving 88 pixels across an image. And that's really the ratio that we want to know. So what we're going to have to do is a little bit of high calculus here. And 
we're going to uh, calculate 100 uh, microns in 88 pixels. And so that gives us a ratio of uh, 1.136 approximately uh, uh, microns per pixel. And so that's the number that we want to hold on to for pipsqueak and enter back into uh, our settings window in pipsqueak. So this is the most common way to uh, calculate the scale of your image. And if you Google it, uh, this is probably what you're going to find. Uh, but you can see the uh, inaccuracies that can show up in placing that line across your scale bar, uh, just because I could be a little bit off here or there, uh, which might not be a huge problem. But there is a way that we can do this more accurately. And I'm going to show you that uh, back on our microscope. So this could be a potential avenue for you as well. A better way to determine the distance in uh, pixels uh, of your images is to go to your microscope computer and uh, have a look at the parameters that you've set up there. So here we're using uh, the Leica LAS software package again, and uh, I've actually imported one of my images. And so here I can see uh, in the acquired settings, uh, I'm acquiring an image size of 181.25 microns square uh, and formatted at 512 pixels square. So uh, we can also see that down at the bottom of our image. Uh, here I can see the 581.25 microns. And if we click over, uh, you can also see that setting in pixels. So what we want to do is take these two numbers and again just do a bit of high calculus and we'll see we'll do 581.25 microns uh, divided by 512 pixels and that gives us uh, off the top of my head uh, 1.135 uh, microns per pixel. So you can see this is very close to what we had uh, just calculated using the scale bar method, uh, but this is probably a little bit more exact because these numbers are coming straight out of the images. There's a trick here. We can also find that number uh, in the acquisition settings here at the pixel size. And you can see it's rounded it up to 1.14 microns. So uh, this is a great number that we can uh, take straight back into uh, our pipsqueak settings. And so now let's go ahead and move on and we'll take a look at some of the other settings uh, that are in the uh, setting window. And right off the bat, under our uh, image dimensions, we have uh, some of the single label analysis parameters. And so the first parameters that we see here are limits to the threshold of detection. And these are important for uh, pipsqueak to be able to see uh, stains in the contrast of the background. So our higher number here uh, at 5000 is really set for just an upper limit, but the more important number is this 1.165. And uh, as you'll see in some of the later tutorials when we're playing with uh, uh, image detection, we can adjust this and really adjust the sensitivity of pipsqueak for uh, detecting cells on the background. And so as we uh, move down here, the next two numbers that we see are limiting the, uh, the size of the stain clusters that we're looking for. And so we've really kind of set the higher uh, size to the sky, uh, whereas 70 tends to be a fairly good size for a WFA stained perineuronal net. So we've used that in this, um, in this parameter here. Below that, we also have uh, circularity limits for the stain cluster that we're looking for. Uh, we want it to be an upper limit of totally circular, but having some circularity as a lower limit is a good way to filter out uh, artifacts such as tears in the tissue or uh, white matter tracks. And so lastly here, we have an ROI enlargement size, and this is a parameter that's used to change the shape of the ROI that's detected from the stain cluster. Um, in this case with WFA, we tend to not change it at all. Uh, in some cases, you may want to actually enlarge the ROI size, uh, and you'll see in our PARB stains, we actually decrease it by about a pixel, uh, just because we want to be a little bit tighter into the cell. So let's go ahead and progress on to the next setting screen, where we're going to see our cell count parameters. 
Uh, these are identical to what we just looked at for the single uh, stain intensity measurement. Uh, here, additionally, you can change where the ROIs are being saved after detection. Now we're on to double label analysis. And so there's a little bit more going on here because when, we uh, when we're analyzing a double stained or even uh, triple stained in future versions of Squeak uh, image, we're gonna have multiple images associated with it. What you're seeing here is that there are three images and these are gonna correspond to how I've named the images. So let's set this aside and I'm gonna open up my file manager. So right off the bat, we have these three images here that are all from a single subject, and you can see that they are uh, some sort of details about what the image is, uh, followed by a one, two, or three, and then dot tiff. And so these numbers are going to need to correspond to what we put into our numbers here in Pipsqueak. So image one just happens to be my Parvel human stain, and I find the Parvel Buman stain to be a good first stain uh, to start with in this analysis. Uh, my WFA stain is going to be placed uh, second, it's going to be analyzed second, and that happens to be um, uh, image number three in the sequence. And then lastly, I have a merged image where the two stains are uh, present, and this is a good double check uh, for the user. And so that happens to be image two. So you can see that placed in there. These will probably be. Uh, somewhat specific for your images, so don't forget to change that. Uh, and then also changing what they correspond to down here. So the first stain parameters, this corresponds to the first image. I'm calling parvalbumin, and I'm setting up to be specific for my parvalbumin stain. So in this case, I've set my threshold to one, uh, upper to 5,000 again, and some specifics for the uh, cells that we tend to see, or the type of cells we see with parvalbumin. Here, my ROI is actually shrunk by one pixel. Uh, like I said, this is just a little bit more uh, specific for parvalbumin. And on the next screen, we're gonna see the second image. So now we're looking at the WFA image. This is the second one. <laughs> uh, and you can see some of the specifics for that WFA stain, which are similar to what we did in the first stain here. We're actually only increasing the pixel size by one. So again, tailor this to your needs. All right. If we close out of that, we're back to our main menu. All right, that's it for this video. Uh, in the next video, we'll look at how to run a single and double labeled intensity analysis.